Hallelujah. Glory be to the living God. <laughs> I want to help somebody. Uh, glory be to the living God. I know some of y'all probably at work. Some of y'all probably, you know, handling your daily duties. I got off about, what, nine something. I want to help somebody about what, what the Bible is talking about. When the Lord said, don't judge. Because... I made a video about this a couple months ago. I did. Uh, I actually went live about it, I believe. But I got more friends on here, more followers. And I'm, I'm starting to hear it more and more. So I want to help somebody out about, you know, what Jesus, what he meant when he said, Judge not that ye be not judged. Because what I see the devil doing is he's desensitizing people's minds. And, and he got people, because the world is so rebellious and love darkness rather than light, he got people taking the word of God and twisting the scriptures and using it as a defense or an attack against God himself against the Lord and his service and people say don't judge you know God said don't judge the Bible say judge not that ye be not judged and they have a bad understanding on what this means and so I just want to help somebody today I want to expound on it because honestly if I had a dollar for every time I've heard people say God said don't judge in the Bible or judge not that ye be not judged I probably have enough money to buy Joel Osteen church and preach some more truth, to be honest with you. And people need to know what the Bible really means concerning this. So by the grace of God, I'm going to reveal the truth to you. I'm going to show you in the scriptures. That born again Christian saints have been validated by God to judge. The saints of God has been validated by the Lord himself to judge. And I'm going to show you in the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to let some people come on. God bless you, Jude. Hallelujah. I'm going to send this to my YouTube. By the way, uh, they threw my brother, brother William Case out. Praise the living God. The, the cop that arrested him. Uh, didn't even show up. So they threw the case out. That was the grace of God. I'm going to let some more people come on. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and start, y'all. On what Jesus meant when he said, Judge not that ye be not judged. They get people getting this scripture out of the book of Matthew chapter seven. You got people who, who don't want to obey God, who don't want to do what God said to do. And when you one of those people that stand for righteousness, that stand for holiness, that preach the truth of God's word. And you telling somebody, look, what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is a sin. You, you're living in rebellion against God. You're living in disobedience. And instead of them receiving that conviction and humbling themselves to the Lord in repentance, uh, what most of them will say is, God said, don't judge. Jesus said, judge not that ye be not judged. And, and they using this as a defense, as an attack. And they feel like when they tell you this, that they supposed to shut you down. That when they feel like when they tell you this, that you need to stop telling me what God said because you're judging, you're being judgmental, and they love to use this. And they have a bad understanding about what this really means. And I want to show y'all in the scriptures today. Hallelujah. By the grace of the Lord. So in the book of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said in verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged. So what they say is in the Bible. Judge not that ye be not judged. 
He sat down with his disciples. He's talking to his followers. He's talking to those who have been with him. He's talking to those who have been following him. He sat them down and he said, look, y'all judge not that ye be not judged. In verse two, he said, for with, for with what judgment ye judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Verse 3, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye. And this is what Jesus said to his disciples. He told his disciples this, his followers. He told them, look, y'all, judge not that you be not judged. And what he's saying is, don't use a hypocritical judgment. He's telling, he's telling his disciples, his followers, look, make sure that if you're going to judge someone else's sin, make sure that you're not practicing that same sin that you're judging them for. For example, I can't tell you to repent uh, of your fornication and having sex outside of marriage if I'm over here having sex outside of marriage. In other words, I'd be using a hypocritical judgment. I can't tell you to stop being gay or you going to hell if you don't repent if I'm a homosexual. I can't sit here and declare to you, look, if you don't repent of stealing and lying, you're going to go to hell if I'm over here doing the same thing. Because I will be participating in a hypocritical judgment. And this is what Jesus is talking about in the book of Matthew chapter 7. When he tells his disciples, look, judge not that you be not judged. Because whatever judgment that I place on you, God is looking down on me. And he, he's looking down on me to discern, am I doing those same things that I'm telling you, you, you going to hell for if you don't repent? That's the judge, not that ye be not judged, because me judging your sins, God is going to judge me according to see, according to if I'm doing the same thing that I'm judging you for. So Jesus is saying, don't use a hypocritical judgment. That is what judge not that ye be not judged mean. And people have a bad understanding on this. And I'm sick of people twisting the word of God because you want to live in rebellion, because you don't want to submit to the Lord thy God, because you want to continue in your wicked ways. And when the Lord sent somebody he have anointed and chosen to rebuke you, to reprove you, you want to take God's word and twist it and say, well, judge not that ye be not judged. And you're fighting against the Lord. You're fighting against Jesus when you do that. When you take the word of God and twist it and try to use it to justify your sin, you're fighting against Jesus Christ himself because he is the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And people keep saying, you know, you're not supposed to judge. God said don't judge. No, God told the saints to judge. Matter of fact, Jesus said... In the book of John chapter 7, verse 24, he said, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So Jesus said, we, we can't judge you according by the way you look. Oh, you don't look like you, you deserve to be saved. You don't even look like you deserve to be a child of God. I can't judge you according to the way that you look, but I can judge you according to your fruit. That's that righteous judgment. You know what it means to judge? That means to distinguish. Yeah, that, that means to discern something. You're distinguishing between good, what's good, what's evil. You're distinguishing between what's right and what's wrong. A tree is known by the fruit that it bear, my friend. If I'm walking up to this tree and this tree has apples on it, that, that shows me that this is a, ha a apple tree. Now, if I go up to this tree and uh, somebody be like, hey, bro, that's a nice pear tree over there. And I go up to this tree and I see apples on it. I'm like, bro, this ain't no pear tree. This is an apple tree. How do I know that this is an apple tree? Because of the fruits that it's bearing. Now, my friend, if you're saying that you are a child of God, if you claiming that you are born again, that you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, and you professing to be a servant of Jesus or a child of the Lord, and you still living in willful sin, you ain't no child of God. You a child of the devil. Look what John said in 1 John chapter uh, 3. 
Excuse me. Look what John said. In 1 John chapter 3, he said in verse uh verse 9 and 10. Look at verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Why? Because his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Look at verse 10. And this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So look how John showed us that whoever is born again, you don't continue in willful sin anymore. And he said, whoever do righteous, practice righteousness, you are righteous in the sight of God. And he says in verse 10, this is how you're going to know who is a child of God and who is a child of the devil. This is what's going to expose them. By the, by the lifestyle that they're living, by the fruits that they're bearing. This is going to show you who is a child of God and who is a child of the devil. 1 John 3, uh, verse 10. Go read it. How is he able to distinguish between the two? Or in other words, how is he able to judge between the two? How is he able to do that? And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm trying to make this quick because I, I really got to go somewhere. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 2. Look what Paul said. He wrote this letter to the church, to the Christians. He said, do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? He said, and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Look at verse 3. Know ye not that we... Talk about the born again Christian saints. We shall judge angels. He said, how much more things that pertain to this life? So the Bible says that the saints shall judge the world. This world that we living in. So the Bible tells the saints to judge. That's the only way we can distinguish between what's good and what's evil. What's right and what's wrong. We have to make a judgment. And people want to say, the Bible says, judge not that ye be not judged. They don't understand the context of the scriptures. And my friend, if you're one of those people that, that follow me on here, and you like to use that, judge not that ye be not judged. I know a lot of people be reading my post all the time and be saying behind that screen, well, God said don't judge. I got people inboxing me. People inboxing me. The Bible says, judge not that ye be not judged. And they don't even understand the context of the scripture. First Corinthians 6, 2. The Bible says that the saints ought to judge the world. Matter of fact, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. The Bible says, uh, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ephesians 5, 11. Go read it. That word reprove, that means expose them. That means expose the sins that they are doing. And if I'm going to expose your sins, the first thing I got to do, I have to judge it. I have to discern it. I have to distinguish it in order to be able to expose it. So the Bible clearly tells the saints to, to judge this world. Matter of fact, Jesus said that when the Holy Ghost come, he's going to reprove the world of sin. He's going to make that judgment on the things that's evil, on the things that's not of God. If a saint ain't making no judgment according to the things of the world, that saint will not be able to live righteous and holy in the sight of God. Because I got to be able to judge what is a sin. I got to be able to judge what is un, uh, contrary to the word of God. What is wrong and disobedient and defiled in the sight of God. So the saints ought to judge the world. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. So, people, <laughs> I know some of y'all, my new friends on here, you know, I've been accepting friend requests. And so y'all new to my page and stuff. A lot of y'all was following my other page. I tell the truth. I tell the truth. You know, I, I try to preach the full counsel of God. I try to preach the, the wrath of God and the love of God, the full counsel of these scriptures. So, my friend, I, I tell the truth. And if the truth is going to offend you, my friend, this is not a page that you need to follow because I'm here to glorify the Lord. I'm here to speak. Jesus said, whatever I speak in your ear in secret, you need to proclaim it on the rooftops. I am one of God's chosen ones. 
I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. I ain't no apostle, no none of that. I'm just a voice of one that's crying in the wilderness. And the Lord has placed this anointing on me to speak the truth because I'm willing to do that. And if you get offended by it, my friend, then that's between you and the Lord. But don't come in my inbox talking about God said don't judge when you don't even understand the context of the scriptures, my friend. Understand something. I can only tell a tree by its fruit. If you practice in homosexuality, you gay. And you need to repent or you're going to go to hell. If you're living in fornication, then you're a fornicator. And you need to repent or you're going to hell. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9 again. I just went over this the other day when I went live. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 9. Look at this list that Paul put on here. How was he able to, to say, look, fornicators ain't going to go to heaven. Adulterers not going to go to heaven. Adulterers not going to go to heaven. Effeminates not going to go to heaven. Homosexuals not going to go to heaven. The thieves is not going to go to heaven. The covetous is not going to go to heaven. The drunkards is not going to go to heaven. The revilers is not going to go to heaven. The extortionists is not going to go to heaven. How is he able to make this long list in this epistle, or in other words, letter, to the church? He placed the judgment. He placed a judgment on people because these are the things that people was doing. My friend, God sent his saints to judge the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. So when you're saying, and I understand because I used to do it when I was lost. I, I understand. I, I did the same thing, you know, when, when I was living in sin and I was lost. And I used to get drunk and all that stuff. And somebody came to me, you know, hey, bro. You know, because I used to club and turn up on Saturday and then up on Sunday, I'm up in church. And somebody came to me, God sent, and was like, look, bro, you a hypocrite. You lukewarm. You need to get right with the Lord. You need to pick a side, make your mind up. And you know what I said? Because I was lost, only God can judge me, bro. How you going to judge me? You, you think you better than me? I used to say those same things because I was lost. Because like the Bible said in Corinthians, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Satan has blinded people's minds. And they got you, he got you thinking that you can continue in your sins and you're okay with God. Have you ever read the Old Testament of the Bible? God always sent a servant to bring the children of Israel back to him because he loved them. They kept going astray. They kept backsliding. Hallelujah. They kept turning away from the Lord their God. So God will raise up somebody to go proclaim what he says to them. Look, you need to repent. He'll, he'll have them judging their sins to reconcile them back to God. That's what this Bible is about. This Bible is about a people who don't know their God and God in his love and in his mercy sent his only begotten son to reconcile you back to him. And he raising up people now in this hour. He raising a generation that's bold, that's anointed, that he have his hand on, that he's sending out into the highways and the byways, using them on social media to judge sin. And I know a lot of people are used to them false prophets. See, the world cleaving to these false prophets that want to tell you what you want to hear. Because like Paul told Timothy, you got them itching ears. I don't want to hear nothing about I can't drink and get drunk. I don't want to hear nothing about uh, I can't shack up or I'm going to hell. I want to hear nothing about that. You used to these false prophets that's preaching this prosperity gospel. My friend, this is not the page. I tell the truth straight from the word of God. And if I ever tell a lie from this Bible, I want the real saints to hold me accountable and rebuke me. If I ever preach something that's contrary to this word, rebuke me. I'm all for the correction. I'm all for correction. Because that's how you become wise, my friend. The Bible says that in a multitude of counsel, there is safety there. So I'm all for correction. But see, people in their pride, people in their pride don't judge me stop you can't judge me you ain't god only god can judge me you know god is gonna judge you he's gonna judge you the bible says we all shall stand before the judgment seat of christ we all shall give account of the deeds that we have done in our body both good and evil god's gonna judge you so my friend 
think about this. If you know, you declare it all the time. I'm not talking to y'all that don't say this. You declare it all the time. Only God can judge me. You make it that declaration that God is going to judge you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth going to speak. So you know in your heart that you're going to stand before God and be judged one day. And my friend, if you know this, if you have an understanding of this, why don't it uh, put fear on the inside of you to get your life right with the Lord? Why don't it put a fear on the inside of you to read this Bible so you can know the mind of the Lord? So you can do those things that's pleasing in his sight. That's the only way you're going to know if you read this Bible and apply it to your life. Jesus said in John 8, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So my friend, if you know that God is going to judge you, can't you see that it's his mercy and it's his grace that's sending somebody in your path to, to try to turn you in the right direction? That's telling you what you're doing is wrong, is a sin, and you're going to go to hell? You know what a lot of people think in this generation? They think because you saved, because you're born again. I'm going to say me, for example. A lot of people think that I ain't never used to do nothing. They think I was just born this saint and I wasn't. My friend, I used to I used to gang bang, sell, sell drugs. I was in the streets heavy. I fornicated. I smoked weed. I smoked cigarettes. I was a drunkard in the club, fighting in the club. I did all of that. But it had to come to a point in my life where I received a rebuke. You understand? I heard the truth of the gospel be preached in jail while I was doing a year waiting to go to court. I heard the truth. A preacher, God sent the man of God in that jail. And he came in there with the power of the Holy Ghost. He ain't coming in there with no, well, y'all, you're going to be okay. God still loves you. You're going to be just fine. I prophesy that you right there over there that's doing those push-ups, you're going to get out in the morning. I prophesy to you, my friend, oh, yeah, you're going to receive a good letter tomorrow. No, he didn't come in there like that. He came in there with the power of the Holy Ghost preaching the word of God. And that's what it takes. Because this word is like a hammer. And that hammer is going to break that pride that's around your heart. If you allow it to. The Bible says in Hebrews. What is it? Chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It says... Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, this word, it's going to cut you up. It's going to slice you and dice you. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable. It's going to trouble you. You feel with demons, it's going to make you uncomfortable. Because Jesus is bringing this word to deliver you. To show you what you're doing is wrong. So that now that you know this is wrong, what you're doing. Now you have an opportunity. You have a choice to make. Am I going to repent and stop doing this? Now that God has brought it to my attention? Or am I going to continue to do it? Even though I know it's wrong. That's why people don't want to know the truth. You don't want to know the truth because the truth is going gonna, gonna to demand you to make a decision. When, when the truth hits you, now you have to make a decision. Am I going to obey this truth? Or am I going to continue to embrace this lie? That's why people don't want to hear the truth. That's why people don't want to hear what they're doing is a sin in the sight of God. Because they don't want, people, don't, they scared to come face to face with the truth. No, no, tell me a lie. Don't tell me that. Uh-uh. Tell me a lie. Because if you tell me a lie, I'll feel better about myself. And I'll know that I'm going to get to heaven anyway. Man, if you really had a relationship with God. And you really had a prayer life. And you really had some experiences with the Lord. Get to know who he really is. You wouldn't play with God like that. People don't know their God. Like the prophet said, a generation is going to come in the world. His prophecy came to pass. He said, a generation is going to rise up that don't know their God. This is that generation. And you got, I'm talking about. These ain't atheists and, and, and the Muslims that's talking about some don't judge. These 
professing Christians, <laughs> professing believers that saying stop judge. You know a Christian I mean to be it means to be Christ like. It means to, to follow Christ. So how can you say that you are a Christian, a believer of Jesus, and you want to scream, judge not that ye be not judged. You're still in the world. You lukewarm. You're a hypocrite. You need to come up out of that. You, you lukewarm. And God said he's going to spit you out of his mouth. And don't fight against us, the real saints, because we choose to obey the Lord because we got a conviction. Hallelujah. I made a video what, yesterday about being a prisoner of Christ. That Paul kept on saying it. He said in Ephesians chapter 3, he said in Philemon chapter 1, uh, he said, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Hallelujah. That means he got a conviction. You can't be a prisoner unless you've been convicted of something. Paul said, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm Jordan. I am a prisoner of Christ. I'm a prisoner of Christ. That means I'm willing to suffer for Christ. That means I got a conviction. And I got a conviction to tell you the truth, my friend, because I love my neighbor. So, y'all, <laughs> stop coming in my inbox with that stop judging stuff. Because you don't understand the true meaning of it. Unless you watch this and you read the scripture for yourself, now you know. And once you know the truth, my friend, now you have a decision to make. Now you have a decision to make to repent of your sins. Hallelujah. And like I said a while ago, I ain't always been saved. I was running wild. Like Paul said, I was the chief of sinners. I used to live in rebellion. So when people come at you with that, judge not that you be not judged, they think they just talking to somebody who, who just grew up in church. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up under no pastor. The streets raised me. Jesus came to me himself and dealt with me. My friend, I'm not preaching something that, that I've heard from some preacher growing up. I'm giving you the word of the Lord that I'm reading in this Bible every day. And you, like Paul said in Galatians, have I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And you know what else people like to say when you so bold like that? Oh, you're prideful. You, you full of pride. You know what pride really is? Pride is willing to humble yourself to the truth. Pride is rejecting the truth. Because when you reject the truth of the word of God, you making a declaration right then and there that you are God and you got your life in control and you don't have to answer to nobody. That's pride. But somebody coming at you out of love telling you the truth of what God said. Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. In other words, I know the terror of the Lord. I've had experience. I've experienced the wrath of God, the judgment of God. I know the other side of God. Hallelujah. I got a relationship with the Lord. I know what he says. I know what he commands, what he demands. And I know the punishment that he will send if we refuse to do it. But because people don't have a relationship with the word, they don't have a relationship with God. You can't have a relationship with God without having a relationship with his word. Because his word teaches us the mind of God, the thoughts of God, the ways of God. But see, people ain't reading their Bible. So they just going, going along with whatever's trendy today. Whatever they've been hearing people say all along. Stop judging people. You know what else they'll say? They'll come out of John 8. He that is without sin cast the first stone. They have a bad understanding about that because they leaving something out of that sentence in John chapter 8. Jesus said when they brought this woman, the Pharisees brought this woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Obviously cheating on her husband or whatever. And they caught in the act of adultery and they grabbed this woman, snatched her by the bed, whatever, whatever, took her to Jesus. And they said, Lord, Moses in the law, he commanded us to stone such a woman for committing this act of adultery. Jesus acted like he didn't hear what they said. He, he stooped down and started writing in the sand. They kept on asking him, what do you say? What, what should we do about this? You claim to be the master. You claim to be the king of the Jews. You, you say you're the son of God. What should we do about this situation? They're trying to trip him up because they was following Moses supposedly. 
And Jesus stood up and he looked at them Pharisees and he said, he that is without sin, what people like to leave out among you may cast the first stone at her. He said, he that is without sin among you. Talking to these group of people right here. Why? Because they was preaching. These were supposed to be teachers of the law. But they weren't even obeying the law. They was taking upon themselves to establish their own righteousness. Living by their own traditions. Jesus kept on rebuking them. Saying, y'all talking about Moses. But y'all don't even do what Moses tell y'all to do. Y'all don't even obey Moses. So in other words, he telling them, y'all sinning y'all selves. And y'all trying to kill this woman. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy men's life. I came to save them. I didn't come to kill you now because you commit adultery. I didn't come to kill you now because you fornicating and smoking weed and getting drunk now. So he told these Pharisees, he that is without sin among you may cast the first stone at this woman. He didn't say he that is without sin cast the first stone. And then they got convicted and they conscious. And all of them threw the stone down. And after that, he looked at this woman and he said, woman, where are those dying accusers? Is anybody left here to condemn you? She said, no man, Lord. He said, I don't condemn you either. And what did he say after that? Go and sin no more. See, people don't read that part, though. They just read that he that is without sin among you cast the first stone and they leave that among you out of that sentence. But if they keep reading, they'll see Jesus even said, stop your sinning. Look, I have saved you. I have shown mercy on you. I've forgiven you. I don't condemn you. Now stop sinning. That's what go and sin no more mean. That means stop sinning. It means stop it. And people want to try to uh, use that scripture out of context to justify themselves. And I'm telling you, God is going to deal with you about that. We can't continue to live in rebellion and sin and think that we're pleasing a holy God. God is holy. He hates sin. Jesus said in the book, the Bible said in Acts 17, at this ignorance, God winked at. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day that he's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he have ordained. So it was some stuff in the past that God was overlooking. You know, he was like, okay, I, I'll let you get by with that. But Acts 17, 30 and 31 says, now God commands everybody to repent. He's not overlooking nothing anymore. Jesus said in John 15, 22, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. In other words, I came now to give my life. Now they ain't got no excuses for their sin now. See, if people read the Bible, you will know this. But people not reading their Bible. They, they just want to tell you, stop judging. Because they want you to shut up. They want you to stop saying things that God said because it's convicting them really it's making them feel uncomfortable them demons in them they get in trouble by the word of God it's troubling them just like it used to do me when I was demon possessed I didn't want to hear nothing about no word of God but it always come a point where God is going to put you in a situation where you're going to have to make a decision you're going to have to make a decision to obey the truth or continue living a lie the choice is yours, my friend. God give us all free will. My own family members, some people in my family members, when I got saved, start telling them, look, man, you need to stop doing this. You need to repent. Who he think he is? He all of a sudden saved now. He was just on the block a couple weeks ago selling dope. He was just in jail. Now all of a sudden you're saved. You're a man of God. Just like they did Jesus. Who does he think he is saying he's the son of God? I know his mother. I know his, fa his father here with us. His name Joseph. I know him. He said a prophet is without honor saving his own country amongst his own people. People going to reject you when you tell the truth. And I'm going to say this because a lot of Christians, I suppose been gone, but hallelujah, praise God. I'm going to say this because a lot of Christians, you scary. You scared to tell people the truth. You scared to live with that conviction you got. You scared to be bold and stand for righteousness because people keep on telling you, stop judging me, and you letting that stuff get to you. 
Now you living in fear. Now you ain't obeying God because you too scared of what people got to say about you, what they think about you. People ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. God do. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, don't fear them who can kill your body, but after that, it ain't nothing they can do. He said, I'm going to tell you who you need to fear. You need to fear God who is able to both destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, you need to fear God because he can kill you right now, send you to hell, raise you up, kill you all over again, send you to hell. That's the one you need to fear who has the power over your soul. But people scary now. People, people scared to tell the truth. Jesus said in Matthew, he said what? Is it 10 or 12, 31 and 32? He, he said, if you confess me before men, I confess you before my father, which is in heaven. He said, but if you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you before my father, which is in heaven. If you be afraid to tell the truth of what the Lord has said, Jesus said he going to be that same way on judgment day when you get up there uh -huh, in the presence of God and you stand up there, Lord, Jesus said, I don't know you. I don't know nothing about you. You were scared to tell them what I said. You didn't confess me before the world. And you knew my word. You knew the truth of it. But you wanted to compromise because you wanted to be famous. Because you wanted to get these likes and, and these comments and all that junk. He said, no, I'm not going to confess you before my father. I'm going to deny you, he said. In other words, he's going to tell you, depart from me. I don't even know you. You're a worker of iniquity. So my friend, the Lord is looking for people that's after his heart. You know one of my prayers? One of my prayers every single night, one of many, is, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. Lord, hurt me for what hurts you. Help me to feel how you feel, Lord, about these things that people do in this world. I want the heart of God. I want the mind of the Lord because I belong to him. And when I repented of my sins and told the Lord, Lord, I'm yours now. I meant that. That means I'm yours, Jesus. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. And I'm not going to do whatever you tell me not to do. Lord, you are the owner of my life. You died for me, Lord Jesus. Lord, I owe you my life. I'm forever in debt to you. And I can never pay you back. And Lord, the only way I know how to pay you back is to obey you. That's the only way I can show you that I love you. Because you said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandment. That's the only way I can show you, Lord. People don't want the heart of God. They want the heart of somebody else. They're too focused on that. They're they too selfish and stubborn. Think about themselves. People don't want the heart of God. They want a handout from God. They want God to bless them. That's why they run all these preachers. <laughs> That's prophet lying to you. You living in sin. God ain't about to give you no call. You living in sin, God is not about to bless you financially if you living in sin. Isaiah 118 said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. The blessings is for the children of God. But you people run into these false prophets. I can't stand it. It, it insults me. It made me uncomfortable. I be watching them on YouTube. These false prophets, even these false teachers on Facebook. Getting on here, lying to people. Getting on here, doing all these prayers and breathing hard. Man, keep it real. Keep it real. What will it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What good is it that you were so popular in the world and you got all these likes and all of this stuff and then you stand before Jesus and he condemned you to hell? What, was, what good was that that you did in the world? Then you in hell being tormented in them flames for all eternity. And them people right there with you. Right there in hell with you because they believed your lies. Paul said, I got to keep my body under subjection. Lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself shall be a castaway. He said in Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. He said, do I persuade men or do I persuade God? Do I seek to please men or God? If I seek to please men, in other words, people, I shall not be the servant of Christ. Hallelujah. In other words, I got to live to please God and God alone. So let's keep it real, y'all. Let's keep it real. You know, Jesus, he loves us. He cares about your soul. 
He care about you enough to tell you the truth, even though it offends you, even though it hurts your feelings. This gospel is uncomfortable when you're living in sin. My friend, when I started reading this Bible, <laughs> when I started reading the word of the Lord and I started learning what sin was, for example, okay, uh, the foul in the temple of God. Smoking cigarettes. I'm like, man, what I'm doing is wrong, Lord. That means I can't smoke? Fornication. Lord, I can't have sex no more. This is a sin. It wasn't pleasing to the flesh. But I had to make that decision. Okay, either I'm going to obey God or I'm going to continue doing what I want to do. Now that I know the truth, I can't unknow it now because I know it. So either I'm going to obey God now or I'm going to continue living in sin. Living in darkness. My friend, I care about you. I love you. I'm not going to compromise this gospel just to please you. Why? Because I'm going to stand before the Lord. And God going to hold me accountable to everything I'm sharing on this Facebook. Everything I'm doing in secret. Everything I'm doing out there in the streets. God is going to hold me accountable. And I'm not going to sit here and share stuff or preach stuff to please you. And I stand before the Lord and he'd be like, depart from me and you walk up in heaven. No, um, no, I'm not going to do that. Peter said in Acts 240, you got to save yourself from this untoward generation. I got to deliver my soul from death. I got to make sure ain't no blood on my hands. So my friend, if you want that prosperity gospel, <laughs> this is not the page for you. It's not. This is not the profile for you to follow because I'm going to tell the truth. Hallelujah. I'm going to make sure I encourage you because we all need that. We need some encouragement too. So I'm going to make sure I encourage you, but I'm going to tell you the full counsel of the Lord as he give it to me. And all y'all people that want me to preach what y'all want to preach, you need to keep that to yourself. Don't, don't come telling me what I need to preach or what I don't need to preach. You need to mind your business. If God done chose you, you preach what he tell you to preach, and I'm going to do what he tell me to do. I'm going to preach the truth. You want to preach the lie to the people? That's on you. Just know you got blood on your hands. But I'm not about to do it. And you're not going to drag me with you. No, I love Jesus. For real. I'm not playing church. Why? Because he first loved me. He delivered me from things that I couldn't deliver myself from. I remember sitting in the hood, living in the projects on the back, smoking a blunt, looking up to the sky, saying, Lord, take me away from this place. I was in sin, but I wanted to get away. And when I got saved, the Lord has taken me places I never thought I'd be. He has blessed me. And I ain't serving the Lord just for the fishes and loaves. That's what come with it. That's the benefits of serving the Lord. I love Jesus for real. I got a relationship with the Lord for real. I'm, I'm not these, these lukewarm Christians that y'all used to. I know it's a lot of them out there that you might, you probably had parents growing up. You will see, you probably had a daddy that was a pastor. He go up in church preaching. He leave church. He come home. He cussing you out, cussing the wife out, beating the wife. You probably used to that stuff. And I'm sorry that you had to experience that. But God still got a people that's real. God still got a remnant left that really love him. And he's raising up some more. <laughs> Hallelujah. You might feel like Elijah felt. Elijah was like, Lord, where is your people? What are people that really love you, Lord? It seemed like all the real saints gone. See, Elijah was going through this, this period because Jezebel was killing all the prophets. She was killing all the real saints of God. So Elijah felt like, Lord, where are your people at? I feel like I'm alone. My friend, if you feel like that, understand you're not alone. God has some people. We might be scattered out, but you pray, the Lord will lead you to him. He's brought some brothers in my life. He's led me to some brothers who really love him for real. That ain't playing church. I ran into false brethren who say they love Jesus. You get around them, look at their fruits. Now, nah, they'll betray you. But the Lord has led me to some real saints. And he'll do the same thing for you. God still has a people that is after his heart like David was. Everybody ain't playing church. There's some real people out here. 
I know y'all see all of these videos, you know, people in church tap dance, you know, you probably go to a church where, you know, they, they dance and then speaking in tongues and then you watch this same person who was just falling out on the floor in church, screaming and drunk. You just watch this same person leave church and live in willful sin. I know it, it traumatizes some people. I've met people on the streets while out uh, street preaching. They like, man, why y'all church people keep coming up in here? I asked him, man, why why you call why you so angry with us, man? He said, because I'm tired of Christians. Y'all go to church, you leave church, and you live in hypocrisy. He said, my dad, he went to church, preached a sermon, came home, and he beat me and my sister. He beat us, beat our mother. So a lot of yo, you gotta understand hypocrisy. Is a stumbling block. Is what I'm saying. Huh, uh, hypocrisy is a stumbling block in people's lives. People is watching us. You don't think they watch it, but they watch you. They they want to see if this is real. They want to see if you're real. So to me, that's the greatest witness. I can go out here with all of these gospel tracts. I can go out here, preach, uh, open air preach and all of this stuff. But the greatest witness that I feel like I have is my lifestyle. That's the greatest witness to anybody is the lifestyle that I live for Jesus. By their fruits, you shall know them. In other words, Jesus said, this is how you're going to know if, that, if they really serve me or not. If they really my disciples, look at their lifestyle. You got people on here uh, on Facebook, one post. Oh, God is good. Glory. Hallelujah. You talking about God? Next post. Cussing. I'm like, man, that's, that stuff is so annoying. Like, you need to make your mind, though. Is you going to serve Jesus or the devil? Which one? Because James chapter 4, I made it in the post, what, yesterday, the other day? James 4 says, you can't be a friend of God and a friend of the world. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore make themselves a friend of the world, you become an enemy to God. So like I said in the post, how you going to be friends with your friend's enemy? What if somebody did that to you? you? You got this friend, you know what I'm saying? And you got this enemy over here. And then you go out in public somewhere just to get something to eat. And you see your friend right there having lunch with your enemy. And the friend that you was with was just talking about your enemy with you. And you see them fellowshipping together. How you, how you gonna feel about that? How you think Jesus feel? How you think the Lord feel when, when we sit in here, I'm a friend of Jesus. I'm saved. I'm born again. But then you out here getting drunk. You shacking up with somebody you ain't married to. You fornicating. You watching porn. You masturbating. You gay. You doing all of these things that he says is a sin. Now, I can understand if you're struggling with this stuff and you, you're seeking the Lord for deliverance, but you ain't doing that. You willfully doing this stuff. If I'm walking in the woods on this path and I see this tree stump. I'm okay, I might not see this tree stump the first time, so I stumble over it and I fall. The same path. Next day, I'm going to be more aware of this tree stump. I'm going to know where it's at because I don't want to fall again. And you know what people say? Well, the Bible says that a just man falls seven times and he rises again. And it says that, but he ain't talking about we falling into sin. He's talking about falling into your trials and your tribulations and your mischiefs that you're going to face in this world. Jesus said in the world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So when the Bible says a just man falls seven times and rise again, he's talking about them trials that you're falling in. Them, them, them tribulations that you're going through in your life. Them mischiefs. Because the, the just shall do what? Live by faith. So because you got a relationship with the Lord and you are just and you are holy, you're going to rise again. He's not talking about we falling into sin. And no, no, because that's contradicting. If we sin willfully, Hebrews 10, 26, 27, that's contradicting. If we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice for sin, but a fearful look of judgment that shall devour the adversaries of God. The Bible don't contradict itself. 
And see, people have a bad understanding of the scriptures. And that's why me, personally, one of my prayers, Lord, I just want to know the truth. Give me the truth of your word, Lord. I don't want what I think about nothing. Show me the truth, Lord. I want to know the truth. And if you have a heart like this, he's going to do it for you. The Lord is searching our hearts. He's searching our motives. He's searching the intents of our hearts. And people praying for stuff. God looking at your heart, man. He see if you serious or not. Like I said in the video of the day, you sitting here, Lord, I'm sorry. He looking at your heart. He know if you're really sorry or not for what you did. He knows. See, people think God is a fool. They think he's stupid because you can't see him. He see you. And he see what you do in secret. Hallelujah. So my friend, seek the Lord now while he may be found. Stop with these excuses and, and all of that junk. If you don't want God, just tell him. Just tell him, Lord, I don't want you. I don't want nothing to do with you. Just let me live my life. But don't use his word to try to fight against him. Don't use his word against him. Because now he going to deal with you. He might cause a tragedy to happen to you. I've seen it happen. He'll do people like that. He's a just God. Don't use his word to fight against him, man. Either you want to obey him or you don't. Just keep it real. Let him know. Lord, I don't want nothing to do with you. I'm, I'm my God. I'm my own God. I'm answering to myself. I'm going to live how I want to live. And he'll be cool with that. He'll let you do it. That's what you want to do. He'll hand you over. You don't believe what I'm saying? All right. Let me show you. Let his word be true in every man a liar, right? I supposed to have been gone. But praise the Lord. All right, look. I'm about to show you. That's what you want to do. He'll let you do it. He'll give you a reprobated mind. He'll, he'll, <laughs> look at Romans 1. Oh my God, because that. Uh, no, 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 no. Get him up to that. All right, look at Romans 1. I'm going to start in verse 18. Look, for the wrath of God, what well, people don't like to talk about, the, the anger side of God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. In other words, God in his anger is, comes down from heaven against people that's living in sin. He says, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You holding the truth in unrighteousness. You don't want to obey him. You want to continue to live a look. Because that which may be known of God is manifest to them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. Because that. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish hearts was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of God. Uh, change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Look at verse 24 in Romans 1. Hey, I'm sweating a little bit. He said, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. In other words, he let them have their sins. That's, that's what he does. He'll let you have the sin that you also want. That you also choose over him. He'll let you have it if you decide, I don't want nothing to do with you, God. I don't want you, God. So just keep it real. Either you want to obey him or you don't. Just let him know. But don't fight against God and don't fight against his people. When you fight against his people, you're fighting against him. Jesus said, whoever don't receive you, don't receive me. Whoever despise you, they despise me. So my friend, now you know the truth. Now you're left with that decision. Either you're going to obey it or you're not. The choice is yours. So y'all be blessed. I'm going to send this to my, uh, my YouTube.